This video is brought to you by Audible. Download your free audiobook at audibletrial.com slash voicey here, link below. This person decides to celebrate by having a party at their apartment that is just for adults. However, this entitled parent decides to bring their kids along anyway, and then continues to make demands on the host. While shopping at a mall, this introvert decides to take out his Game Boy Advance, but when this entitled kid sees it, things start to go south. Our fan submitted story. This woman is trying to clean up her house when her mother-in-law offers to help. She declines the help, but as soon as her back is turned, her mother-in-law takes things into her own hands. What hilarious thing does this woman do in response? You'll only find out by watching this episode of Voicey Hears Entitled Parents. This story was called, It's My Home, My Party, My Rules. I own an apartment, and the last four years, I was unable to pay the mortgage on my own, so I had roommates. I had a great raise, which meant I was able to tell the roommates to find another place to live. I've spent the last few years without having friends over, and I wanted to celebrate by hosting a small party. I sent my invitations. Everyone says they'll be there, and an acquaintance told me how he has a new girlfriend, and asked me if she could come. I saw no issues. I was wrong. Few hours before the party, the new girlfriend, let's call her Karen, texted me saying she could not find any babysitter. I told her to ask my best friend if they could share her babysitter, but she told me the kids don't get along. I was surprised, as the best friend's kids is sweet and wants to be friends with everyone. I told Karen I was sorry, but I didn't want kids at my party, and every one of our friends was stoked to leave their kids at home for once. She didn't reply, so I assumed she was mad. Few hours later, few quality people showed up at the door and were having fun, until acquaintance and his girlfriend, Karen, arrived with her three kids. I wasn't happy, but well, I let them in, but I wanted to talk with Karen, so I took her aside. I told you this was not a party with kids. I know, but my kids are well behaved and I wanted to meet everyone. Acquaintance is always talking about his wonderful friends. Okay, let the kids play in the spare room. Karen went on to set up her kids in the room, but soon came back. Where's the toys for them? Toys? I don't have any. I don't have any kids. How do you expect me to entertain them then? You didn't bring anything? No, there's always toys wherever I go. Well, I'm sorry, but I don't know what to do. Could you set up your PC in the spare room? Gosh, no. This PC is brand new and I won't let a kid play with it. I began to feel upset. She was keeping me away from my friends and made me deal with her issues concerning her kids. So I told her to find a solution on her own and she gave them her phone to play with. A few moments later, someone rolled a joint and almost everyone followed. It's perfectly legal where I live. What are you doing? Are you out of your mind? There's kids in here. Well, they weren't supposed to be here, so... This is a 420 friendly home. This is my place. I kinda can do whatever I want, you know? Can you please at least go outside? I'm sorry, but my neighbors like to sleep with their windows open, so I don't want to bother them with the noise and the smell. What kind of person are you? Thinking about the well-beings of your neighbors, but doesn't give a darn about my kids? Are you a freaking moron? A child hater? I was ticked off at this point. You know what, Karen? This is my home my party, my rules, and I'll do whatever the frick I want in here. You already broke the no kids rule. I went with it, but who are you to tell me and my guests not to smoke in my home? I'm sorry, acquaintance, but I need to ask you, Karen, and the kids to leave. I would like you to stay, but she's not welcome anymore. If you want to stay, bro, I'll give you a ride home. So acquaintance stayed, Karen and her kids went home, and they broke up a few weeks later. We had a blast as soon as she left. She knew she wasn't supposed to bring kids to this party, but she did it anyway. What was she thinking when she went up to the door? Everybody act natural, just pretend like you're not here. The entitled parents who basically use their kids to manipulate other people by just forcing them into a situation, which leaves the other person to basically go, well, you gotta get lost now. They have to be the worst, because one, they're making the other person feel incredibly uncomfortable, and two, they're putting their kids in situations that they're probably not supposed to be in. Like for example, this party. They don't care about the welfare of their kids and they don't care about what other people think. They just want to try and manipulate and get whatever it is they want. She probably just didn't want to pay for a babysitter and she made everybody else's night more miserable, including her own. This story was called, EK Steals My Game Boy Advance. Thinking it's a Switch Mini, tries to sell it to GameStop. Background, I have pretty intense depression, so me leaving the house is a rarity. Earlier this week, I left the house for the first time in three weeks. I'm 21 and live at home. I don't go to the mall often. 
but I really love it because it brings back some really nice childhood memories. I do about a lap around the mall, just to check out all the stores, and then settle down in a sitting area that's sort of isolated. I don't really like being close to other people, but I love people watching, go figure. So I'm just minding my own business, playing the herbs on my Game Boy Advance. It's a custom GBA with an added backlight because it was impossible to see the original GBA screen in most environments. I only note this because you can pick up a regular GBA for relatively cheap, but this custom model is more expensive. I hear EM and EK coming before I even see them. The kid is screaming about something, and the mother is just saying, Yes honey, of course honey, over and over again. It looks like they're heading towards the Macy's entrance, about 10 feet from where I'm standing. I look back down at my GBA and continue playing, but then I hear the kid start getting louder, and in a matter of seconds it's clear to me that he's getting closer. I pick my head up and he's right next to me. Is that the new Switch Mini? I mean, I've heard rumors about it, but I didn't know it was for real. No, it's a Game Boy Advance. It's kind of old school. Came out in like 2001. You lying to me. I never heard of that. You just don't want anyone to use your new console. Yeah, I had a Game Boy growing up and I didn't look anything like that. It was a rectangular box and the screen was brightened in color. That was the original Game Boy from the 80s. This is a newer version. At this point, I decide I'll try to convince them it's not the Switch Mini by showing them the game I'm playing. Then they'll see how old the graphics look and just leave me alone to play in peace. Here, check this out. Look how old these graphics are. I lean in to my right to show the kid my game and he snatches it up the second it's within his reach. I should have had a better grip on it, but in order to show him the screen, I was holding it in a weird position. Before I can even say a word, he's running off with it saying, I got the Switch Mini! I got the Switch Mini! His mother is chasing after him and she's in pretty good shape and he's a kid. So by the time I process everything, they've already got the lead on me. I should mention at this point that I'm pretty overweight and I suffer from asthma. So running is not the easiest for me. In what seems like 10 seconds, they're already out of my line of sight. So I decide going after a security guard is my best option. About two minutes into me explaining and the security guard asking for my description of them, I see the mother and son approaching us very quickly and looking angry. Perfect, I think to myself. That'll save the security guard the effort of having to track them down. Before I can even finish, the entitled mother starts blabbering, sounding like she's on the verge of tears. Excuse me, Mr. Security Guard. I can't remember how she addressed him. This man showed my son this console, saying it was the Switch Mini, and we tried to resell it to the GameStop, and they said they don't take consoles this old. Yeah, this console's a piece of crap, and he said it was brand new. EK drops it on the ground, with a look of displeasure on his face. I did no such thing. I told you it was a Game Boy Advance, and you stole it out of my hand and ran away. You're lying. You're the one that's a thief and a terrible liar. Everyone calm down. There's an easy way to figure this out. When did this all go down? No more than five or six minutes ago. Well at least you're not lying about one thing. That is when it happened. Security guard starts talking into his radio. Hey Larry, can you check the camera feed near the mall entrance to Macy's from seven minutes ago to now? About a minute passed and I'm hearing exactly what happened being described to Larry. I'm sorry ma'am, but I'm gonna have to take you and your son down to the security area while we wait for the police to arrive. Another guard is calling them as we speak. I don't care what the camera shows. That man stole this game system under false pretenses. That's fine. You can explain all of that to the police. Son, can you give this man his electronic device back? EK hands me my GBA. It's slightly scuffed up, but nothing too bad. Whatever, this is a piece of garbage anyway. The security guard sent me on my way, and I watched them walk off into the proverbial sunset. I'm happy my GBA wasn't damaged, and as much as I was mad at that little kid, I can't help but think that if he wasn't raised by that woman, he wouldn't be this way. Also, not sure if this experience inspired confidence in me leaving the house more often. Maybe I'll just go somewhere other than the mall next time. This is why people don't like going outside. People are out there stealing your Game Boys and stuff. Whenever you're playing video games, your parents are always like, go outside and play. It's like, no mom, that's where people steal my games. I'm safe inside. I can play my games inside. This fan submitted story was called, Mother-in-law needs to learn some serious boundaries. Sadly, the entitled parents in my life are my in-laws. My relationship with them is strained. Loads of past family drama. 
hubby long ago pleaded me to basically watch my step with them and not rock the boat because he was just done with the drama. As a result, they can do just about whatever and I can't really say boo to them. I've had my moments with them where I just snapped, but for the most part, no. This story takes place about 10 years ago. My oldest child was in grade school. They got homework, but mostly just really easy worksheets. I don't exactly remember the circumstances. School was still in session, but my mother-in-law, father-in-law, and brother-in-law were all visiting. Hubby and I aren't the best housekeepers, and the parental in-laws always have to comment about it. Mother-in-law used to talk to the kids, comments were really directed at me, about how they should help her clean up so she didn't trip and fall. Father-in-law used to refer to our clutter as Bosnia. So nice. During the visit, mother-in-law commented on how the table would have to be cleared off, which I acknowledged. She said what she used to do is just throw everything into a bag and hide the bag. I offered up an uncomfortable laugh because what I did not feel comfortable saying is, that's great, but I'd rather not. At some point, I go upstairs to take a shower. When I come down, the table is completely cleared. I'd been meaning to do it after I had my shower, and I asked what happened. Mother-in-law told me she'd done the old bag trick and that she'd tucked the bag in the back room. This might have been okay, except I know that she didn't bother to sort everything. Just shoveled everything into the bag. Crumbs, trash, wrappers and things. Things that needed to be put away. Mail that needed going through. Oldest child's homework and school things. Just chucked into a bag and chucked into another room because who cares? The table's clean, right? That's all that matters, right? I grabbed the bag and unceremoniously dumped everything out onto the floor. Loudly. Didn't matter. Mother-in-law's a bit hard of hearing. Brother-in-law heard though. He came into the hallway and saw the mess and said, What happened here? I didn't answer him. Just sorted through the pile of crap to dig out the most important stuff and dealt with the rest. I wanted to yell at mother-in-law. I wanted to be able to vent. Instead, I bit my tongue. If anyone thinks this sort of thing isn't so bad, mother-in-law's famous for doing stuff like this. One time, I caught her at our dining table, looking through our mail. But I don't just mean flipping through the envelopes. I mean taking things out of open envelopes and reading through them. When I noticed her doing this, I froze and just stared at her. When she noticed me, she just laughed and said, Oh, I'm so nosy, and kept reading. She honestly has never cared. Personal space is such an important thing. That's why it can feel like you're being violated when somebody you have to invite into your house starts going through your stuff or telling you how you're supposed to be running your house. Different people prioritize different things. For some people, they want the cleanest house ever, and that comes at its own cost. For others, they don't want to stress about that so much, and they have other priorities they put into, and so their house might not be as clean. So to just dump all of the stuff from the table into a bag, without asking or checking with them first, is one of the rudest things you could do in someone's house. Sure, you can have your own opinions about how you think they should run the house, but because you don't know what was on that table, maybe they remembered they put some important document down there, and now it's lost or destroyed or squished. As a general principle, I think people should mind their own business, especially if you're in someone else's home. If you'd like your story to be narrated by me, don't forget to visit the subreddit r slash voicey here, link below. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe if you'd like to see more. Alright, I'll see you in the next one.